Hi, I'm Charles with Annie Cap. We're almost at 70,000 subscribers, so please consider subscribing. Thank you. The story begins by showing an injured woman avoiding some men as she sings Twinkle Twinkle Little Star to her baby. She leaves the child with someone who invites her into her home as she claims to have to get a medicine. However, she never returns and we see that 18 years has passed. A young girl named Lu Xiao begs for some candy as we see that she is asking the grown-up version of the baby since we see that he wears the same walnut necklace. His name is Xu and he explains that they need to save money. The girl dramatically claims that he has changed, so he gives in, asking that she stop watching soap operas. He overhears people talk about someone that had emitted blue light from their hands, and another that was able to lift 4,000 pounds. He explains that there has been lots of news recently about people being able to do superhuman things, and some people are claiming them to be superpowers. The two attempt to watch a show at the festival, but he isn't able to carry her for long, so they make their way to the front of the crowd where Shu has a strange vision. As they watch the show, he begins to wonder if the performer is using some kind of trick to control the flames, or perhaps he has developed superpowers. Afterwards, Lu Xiao would like to go backstage in the hopes of being taught the tricks so that they can make some money. Xu says it's a bad idea, but hesitates for a moment and realizes it might actually be a great idea. There, they witness as the performer is put to sleep, and once they are found, they claim that they simply got lost looking for the bathroom. The men claim to be police and are simply taking the performer into custody for not having permission to do a show there. Shu thinks how that is definitely a lie but doesn't say anything as the men let him leave. Outside, a man sees that he came out from backstage and would like to know what Shu saw. However, Shu doesn't like the stranger and just ignores him. He then thinks to himself how it seemed as if the performer had been using his superpowers in his show and predicts that the men might be going around capturing those with powers. Lu Xiao keeps using his name and Xu says to call him brother, but she refuses, reminding him that they are not blood related. He threatens to leave her at the orphanage, but she says to do it, since she will find her way back to him anyway. Xu asks what she would do if there were super strong people in the world, and she says she would just become stronger. She believes Xu to be weak, but says it's okay as she will protect him and all he will have to do is cook. Later, Lu Xiao watches the news that shows people young and old doing superhuman things, and questions if it's magic or the awakening of the human body. Xu will have to go to the store to get more noodles, but Lu Xiao says his food never has flavor and would rather eat the walnut around his neck. He says to not even think about it, and she again exclaims that he has changed. On his way to the store, he has memories of how Lu Xiao had always been by his side growing up. As he crosses the street, he is struck by a vehicle and lies on the ground as he loses consciousness. However, in that moment, something supernatural occurs. His walnut is destroyed, emitting a light that courses through his body. He wakes up having no damage and feeling no pain, making him wonder if he has developed powers, but puts that thought aside as he wants to take that opportunity to make the driver pay. However, the man runs away as he believes Shu to be a ghost. He buys some flavored instant noodles for Le Xiao and runs home. His encounters with people after the accident now show numbers above their head, but he ignores them. He explains to Le Xiao that he was hit by a car but is fine, and she concludes that Xu must have killed the driver. He inspects his body to find a strange marking when a user interface appears before him. It displays several names of people he doesn't know with balances next to them. He then realizes that he had scared the people earlier and that their negative emotions become his points. He believes to have awakened his powers and become the Demon King since the more negative emotions, the stronger he becomes. He uses his balance to gamble but loses several times. He finally manages to win one turn and only receives an apple in return. However, after eating it, he realizes it gives him a really good feeling. He gambles away his remaining balance but manages to win his final turn. He receives the lyrics to Twinkle Twinkle Little Star that has been altered a bit. After singing the song, he sees that he has been taken to a star system, so he yells to Lu Xiao if she saw him fly out the window. She says no and that he is stupid, making him realize he must still be home. Lu Xiao needs to know what to put on the noodles, so he tells her to put onions, which annoys her a bit and makes him realize he can get points off of her. Later, the two watch soap operas together when the news reveals a fire nearby. Xu goes to see it from the roof and finds the strange men from before. The men find him and question what he is doing. Shu luckily had found a basket of radishes and tell the men he was up there collecting them. 
One of the men says that he didn't notice any fluctuations in Shu's heart rate and they let him go. He wants to explain everything to Le Xiao but is interrupted by someone falling off the roof. She has several negative feelings for not being able to go investigate with him and follows him anyway. The man is the performer from earlier and Shu wonders if he had caused the fire. He speaks poorly of the man and the numbers reveal that the man is only pretending to be unconscious. Shu wants more points so he says that they should leave the performer's body there and it is not their problem. The man begs for water but Shu only offers snow. He continues to antagonize the man so the performer tries to burn Shu. However, all his attempts are unsuccessful and claims that he was just joking. He leaves and Chu explains that he has awakened his powers, but Le Xiao doesn't believe it and says it wouldn't matter anyway since his body is so weak. Later, Chu realizes the user interface also has a shop, and he buys a celestial fruit. After eating it, he arrives at the star system again where he sees a second star become illuminated. He returns to find that he now has supernatural strength. He goes back to the living room and Le Xiao teases him for missing a school event, but he explains it's because they have no money. He needs to pay for food and her schooling. He teases one of his friends over messaging and finds that he can earn points that way as well. The Shao brings some eggs that they will be able to sell the next day and Shu praises her for a job well done, but asks about her homework to farm some more points. The next day, Shu sells the food alone as Le Shao has a cold. His stand is near his school and some of his classmates ignore him out of embarrassment. A rude classmate named Lee tries to humiliate Shu, but he is unbothered. Shu manages to trick him into buying all the rest of his eggs while also getting lots of points off of him. The guy has no cash, but a popular girl named Chao lends him some. Shu explains how eggs are high in nutritional value and a good brain stimulant as his annoyed classmate leaves. In class, it is revealed that a website has been made specifically about awakened people. It is explained that there are currently six ranks that range from F, which are only slightly stronger than ordinary people, to A, who are those that can resonate with heaven and earth. Leveling up slowly by awakening multiple times is also possible. Shu acknowledges that he is currently only level F, just as a student barges in revealing that a classmate has just awakened after arguing with the teacher. Shu follows the commotion that eventually leads him to the roof, passing Chao along the way and noticing that she hides her ability. At the roof, the student warns that nobody approach him, but all Shu can think about is how to collect all the negative emotions. The student believes he won't get in trouble for any wrongdoings because he is too young, but Shu steps up to demonstrate his in-depth knowledge of the law, which shocks everyone and earns him several points. That opportunity is used to capture the student and a classmate wonders how Shu knew he wouldn't throw the teacher over, but he explains he didn't know. Back in class, it is revealed that everyone will be getting a blood test that can't be avoided. On his way home, Shu sees the same guy he ignored at the festival helping his auntie with some medicine, only to ignore him again. Le Xiao's fever is getting worse since she tried to wash Shu's clothes, and he attempts to get a celestial fruit in the hopes that it will cure her. He finally manages to win a few and she is shocked when she eats it. Le Xiao gets better and wonders what kind of fruit just disappears in your mouth. He gives her some more and she begins to believe he is awakened and wonders if fruit growing is his great ability. She explains that she would like to awaken as well and he promises to find a way. Before he leaves, he mentions her homework a few times to get some points back. The next day, it is explained that there will be a special class set up for the awakened and they will know who they are because of the blood test. Shu's classmates mock him as they are confident he is not an awakened since he appears to be so weak. All the students are then introduced to the teacher of the special class named Mr. Fei. The students of the special class are then revealed one by one, and everyone is shocked when Shu's name is called. We are then shown a dispute far away over some ruins. It is between a man and someone he refers to as an invader, and their dispute becomes a fight. In class, a new student Jiang is introduced, and is seated next to Shu. The class is surprised to find that he is a boy as he has many feminine features. Later, Shu realizes that his new teacher was one of the mysterious men in black he met before, and wonders what the class's true purpose is. Mr. Fei asks if anyone knows what sodium potassium alloy is and calls on Shu, but his answer is embarrassingly bad. Jiang explains that many metals have become a medium for aura transmission, and some people are even able to turn them into weapons. Mr. Fei explains that 17 months ago, the world environment began to change, 
and people with skills emerged. When sodium potassium alloy comes into contact with blood, the color that emerges reveals that person's rank. However, he makes it clear that this is only their current level and how they develop depends on them. Later, the student's ranks are published and Chu's classmates mock how he is the lowest ranked at rank F. Jiang is amazed at how unaffected Chu is by the insults, as he sends a message making fun of his rude classmates' haircuts. That night, Shu reveals that he only started eating more fruit after the blood test, so the results are definitely worse than how strong he actually is. His user interface reveals that he has reached the maximum amount of fruit he can win with the lottery, and it can only be bought at the shop. He tries to raffle again to find that the new prize is now Stinky Tofu. Le Xiao would like for him to get her some pancakes, but several attempts only results in more tofu. Eventually though, something new comes out that affects Le Xiao causing her to see a star system of her own, meaning that she has had her first awakening. That night, she wonders what the difference between their two star systems is and if there is a connection. He wishes that he would stop getting so much stinky tofu when he comes up with an idea. The next day, Shu admires a man as he practices swordsmanship, and the man offers to teach him, but Shu declines. We then watch as Shu puts his plan into action. He is able to earn money by selling the stinky tofu while also earning points from people smelling its awful stench. The results are great, putting Shu in a great mood and earning plenty of points to buy tons of fruit directly from the shop. After some time, we see that Shu's star system has developed quite a bit and he is now able to call upon a sword. He recalls how Mr. Fei taught them that there can be anywhere from 3 to 7 stars. Shu explains that he received the sword after breaking through the first star, and wonders what he will get for breaking all seven. At school, the students panic about a recent bank robbery committed by some awakened, and wonder if it will cause problems for other awakened. They discuss the idea of their class forming a group that fights crime. Lee explains that Shu doesn't have to be completely useless as his father is thinking about hiring a bodyguard. Shu explains that Lee is clearly an unhappy person and is glad he isn't like him. In his special class, Mr. Fake gives each of the students a spirit stone that they are supposed to use to help them practice and report the results. However, after using it, Shu sees that it only makes his star system extremely violent, making it useless, and he wonders how he will tell Mr. Fei. The next morning, the swordsman once again sees that Shu is admiring his technique and asks if he wants to learn only to find that he is not interested. At lunch, Jiang tells Shu about an organization authorized by the country to gather awakeners. They are divided into the Earth Network, which is for the most common awakeners, and the Heavenly Network, which are for the strongest, that are at least a B rank. There are less than 10 members in the Heavenly Network, the strongest of which is a man named Ting. That night, Shu eavesdrops as he sees that the swordsman next door has a visitor, who introduces himself as Ting and asks to see Master Li. Master Li is glad to see members of the Heavenly Network and welcomes Ting inside. Ting explains that the world is at war and asks that Master Li join him as the last member of the Heavenly Network. Master Li explains that they have different views and he only wants to spend his twilight years in comfort. Ting says that there are many ruins that have yet to be explored and if they find more herbs they will hopefully get them to him in time. Master Li declines his offer and Ting hopes that the next time they meet they will not be enemies. As he leaves, Ting promises to still keep his word about the herbs. Afterwards, Shu explains who that was to Le Xiao and thinks how it might be a good idea to accept lessons from the swordsman as it seems he is more powerful than he originally thought. The next morning, Shu expresses interest in learning from Master Li, but there is one thing taking up all his time. Master Li is eager to teach and so he offers up to help any way he can. Shu says he needs help with his sister and explains not to worry as she is super nice. A grumpy Le Xiao emerges from the house and Shu explains that Master Li will look after her when he is not around and help with her studies. Thanks for watching part 1. If this video gets 10,000 likes, I will know you like the anime and will make a part 2.